Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Um, had a little bit of time before flying out this afternoon, so decided to uh, design up and build um, the two low-pass filters that sit on the output of the, uh, the power amplifier. Uh, these are half-wave filters, uh, two of them, uh, one for the 80 meter band and one for the 40 meter band. Uh, and similar to the bandpass uh, filter, I'm, I'm quite happy to have these as swappable modules. Um, I very regularly change bands, so the fact I have to change two filters for me is absolutely no problems at all. So by way of design, um, as I just said, there are simple uh, half-wave filters. So uh, two tank circuits, um, two inductors in series, and then three parallel capacitors. Um, the way you set these things, these things up is uh, you set your impedance you want to have for the input and output. In this in the particular case, I'm going to have it at 50 ohms, um, and then you simply solve for your inductors, your inductance, and your capacitance um, at a certain frequency. So uh, for this capacitor here, its capacitive reactance will equal the same as the output capacitor, and will also equal the inductive reactance of these two inductors. So they'll all equal 50 ohms at the frequency of operation. Uh, this center capacitor here is a little bit different. Um, I've just called that C1, and its capacitive reactance is only 25 ohms. And as we know, our inductive reactance is 2 pi FL, and our capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi FC. Um, so therefore, by substituting in 50 ohms for our inductive and capacitive reactants, our frequency of operation, we can then solve for the unknown uh, inductance and capacitance. So in terms of the 80 meter filter, if we just uh, concentrate first on the two inductors, let's make our uh, frequency the center of uh, the 80 meter band here in New Zealand, so 3.7 megahertz, and we can rearrange this formula here uh, making the inductance um, the subject. So in this particular case, uh, it'll be inductance equals our capacitive reactance, or 50 ohms, divided by 2 pi frequency, which gives us a, an inductance of 2.15 microhenries. Now the, uh, the power amplifier that I'm using here is on or about uh, 10 watts, so a T50-2, um, or the T50 at least, will be an appropriate sized inductor, so, uh, or uh, toy wheel I should say, um, for that particular power level there. So um, this is the 80 meter band, so I'll use the dash 2 material, so it's going to be a T50 dash 2. Um, now for a T50 dash 2, um, 21 turns on that will give us 2.16 microhenries, which is close enough to our 2.15. And I'll be using, um, again because it's only 10 watts, I will use number 24 gauge wire for that. So that's going to be the inductors, those two inductors there for the 80 meter band. Now solving for C, so that's this uh, input capacitor, and I'll just notionally call it the output capacitor. Again, rearranging this formula to make C the subject, we'll just put C up here and put that down there. We can now solve. So 1 over 2 pi, again, our frequency, 3.7 megahertz, times 50 ohms, comes out at 860 picofarads. Um, I'm going to use the standard value of um, 820 um, for that. Um, as a starter for 10. Now C1, that's that, that center capacitor up here in our, um, in our filter. Again, the only difference there is we'll do exactly the same solving, but we're only looking now for 25 ohms. And they'll come out at uh, 1721 picofarads, uh, which is an unusual value. Well, it's suffice to say, we'll make it up close enough as uh, a 1200 picofarad capacitor in parallel with a 560, which would be 1760 picofarads, which is reasonably close, close to 1721. Um, I did model this in LT Spice um, using these values here, these standard values, and uh, the, the, the waveform looked fine, um, had good attenuation, so I'm quite happy to run with those standard values. Now for the 40 meter version, um, same approach. But in this particular case, we will set uh, for here, uh, I'm going to set F at 7.1, our frequency at 7.1 megahertz. Again, solving for our two inductors, comes out at 1.12 microhenries, 
by just substituting 50 ohms and our 7.1 megs into the inductive reactance formula and making our inductance the subject. Um, now this is the 40 meters or, or 7 megahertz so that's the start of where the dash 6 material becomes effective so in this particular case I'll use the yellow core the T50-6 uh, for that particular device there 17 turns will give us 1.16 microhenries which is close enough to 1.12 so we'll run with that and again that'll be 24 um, gauge wire for the two uh, capacitors at each end again just solving for our capacitance 50 ohms at 7.1 megs comes out at 448 picofarads so we'll just use as a standard value for now uh, 470 picofarads that center capacitor Again, now we're just solving for 25 ohms, comes out at 897 picofarads, uh, and I'll just use an 820 in parallel with an uh, 82, which will come out to uh, roughly 902 picofarads, um, which again is, is close enough to that. Again, same scenario, modeled that in LC Spice, and uh, the performance looked good. So let's just uh, run it up. So what we have here, uh, very similar to what we did yesterday. Got the SIG gen there feeding into our 1dB pad, into the power amplifier. Um, the output's going through uh, the filter and then back out. Again, scoping uh, the um, voltage across the dummy load. So my bother looking at the, the, uh, the power. We'll just look at the um, at the uh, the waveform itself. So let me just uh, double check. So that's all wired up. It's in there. We've got the 80 meter filter in. Let's just uh, get power up and running, and we'll start to increase our amplitude now. So that's coming up. That's sitting on 10 watts there. I'm not going to sit there because I'm going to be talking a little bit. So let me just drop that down to uh, five odd watts, and certainly. Uh, as we'd expect all those high frequency components that were coming through from that push-pull amplifier with no uh, filter it has been nicely cleaned up so now we've uh, well and truly restored our, our nice and our, and our I say again, get a bit tongue-tied there, a, a nice sine wave so let me just change the frequency, that's 4 megahertz so if we go back to here, that's 4, 5, 6 so that's 6 megahertz there, so it's starting to get into the, quite a bit of attenuation 7 megs, so uh, well and truly dropping off there and, and beyond. That's now uh, 9, 10, it's virtually gone. Back to 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. So um, that's good. So let me just drop that power back down again. Um, and uh, yeah, so suffice to say, um, the performance of the, the 4 to me one uh, is uh, no different. So uh, I won't bother demonstrating that because it's just the same but a higher frequency. So yeah, that's good. A um, couple of things I did do to try and minimise, oops, as sorry, to try and minimise uh, any kind of leakage around around this, as you, I can see that very well. But sort of went out of the way to try and um, cut all the unused tracks. Um, I apologise for the light sort of ricocheting off the copper there, but uh, just tried to minimise any possibility of. Um, uh, RF either leaking around the side of the inductors or any kind of feedback from the output going back to the input so just try to break his tracks all the way through um, the bottom track of course is the earth so I fed that all the way in um, and that seems to perform quite well um, I have seen versions where they have across here a shield between the two but what I've tried to do here is keep the two inductors um, a reasonable distance apart so the, uh, the magnetic field around one, albeit should be reasonably small because it's a toroid, um, is not um, interfering or cutting the other, the other turns. So uh, I've tried to do that isolation through separation. But again, the, you know, in terms of the scope, it seems to look quite good. So anyway, um, I will leave it there. Um, I'll be away a little bit now on a business trip. Uh, and when I come back home, next steps will be to build the uh, driver for the PA um, and then hook it up and we'll start doing some more transmission tests uh, my thinking is um, to have that driver um, 
tunable, it's probably lack of a better term, but it's gain variable. So depending if it's on the 80 meter or the um, 40 meter band, uh, I'll, I'll probably cut down the gain a bit on the 80 meter and then up the gain on the 40 meter to try and offset some of the uh, the gain reduction through the PA at the higher frequencies. But uh, it's all about playing around and experimenting, so we'll just see how things play out there. But uh, suffice to say, um, today's effort was to to look at the filters and to build the filters and to test the filters and um, I'm quite happy, you know, just stock standard components there, nothing nothing exotic by way of capacitors. Um, and again, for the power levels that I'm playing with, um, that's that's more than suffice. Right, I'll say 73s. Uh, any questions, sing out. Uh, apologies if I don't get to answer those uh, as, as soon as I can. Um, I'll have sort of spotty internet coverage um, over the next uh, week or so. Anyway, 73s all, and we'll catch you next time.